Hey, Travis here. It's been a long day of recording, and I thought I would play a little hooky, take a little break, and put together a video on female character voices as a male audiobook narrator. I think this is a really interesting topic of discussion, I, and there's surprisingly few resources available online or elsewhere about technically how to approach this, so I think it bears talking about. Um, but before we get into anything technical, I do want to start with kind of a philosophical underpinning for this, which is that the female characters that you voice that are part of the books that you narrate uh, should have equal variety to the male characters that you voice. They're equally as important and they should be as fully realized. When we talk about having a female voice or a female vocalization, we're not talking about having the one female voice that you pull out of the closet for every female character that comes your way. It's a range of voices. And so I want to approach it from that perspective, that we're going to take into account the context clues that the author gives us, and we're going to do our absolute best to do justice to them as fully realized characters. So, let's start somewhere for that, though. First, let's start with our own voice. So, for me, and potentially for you, when you're doing male voices, you've got your own voice, your center point. And for me, I can kind of find that. I can take two fingers and I can draw them down along my esophagus. And as I'm speaking, I can find the point where it vibrates the most, where my voice lives. And for me, it's right about here. So let's call that the midline. Now, when I voice male characters, I reach out from that midline in various directions, down, up, I'm pitching up or down, or applying other characteristics to the voice in order to realize the character as it's presented on the page. And what I want to do here for the female range of characters is to establish a new midline that's used for that gender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my voice up, this point of vibration, and I'm going to move it up into my mouth. And the point of vibration is here at my palate, the roof of my mouth. And I can feel it up inside my sinuses. If I take my fingers and press them lightly alongside my nose, I can feel it there. Why am I doing a British accent? I'll tell you in a moment. But let's talk about some of the differences physically as we are speaking in this mode. My throat is relaxed. I'm not clenching at all to do this. I'm not squeezing in order to push my voice higher. I'm simply altering the location where I am resonating. Now, as a guy, when I speak, I can also feel the resonation in my mouth, uh, on my, my front teeth, the back of my front lip. It's almost like a heaviness of vibration that happens up here on my chin. And again, I'm pushing that up into my, into my palate, as I mentioned earlier. Now, the next component of this is, is breath, is breathing. When I'm normally talking, I eject a lot of breath, and it's relatively forceful, and that's my natural voice. What I'm doing is backing that off. We're using less projection, and we're softening it. It's breathier, but we're not attempting to make a breathy voice. We're simply attempting to reduce the amount of resonance that's happening here down in my throat and in my chest, so that the register is higher. Now, the next component, watch my lips, watch my teeth. But I'm going to say the letter A. We'll say the letter A. Now, you see how wide my teeth spread apart and how much lip motion there is as they pull away from my teeth? A. A. You see how constrained my lips are and how little my teeth actually pull apart? A. As I'm speaking and restraining my chin motion and my lip motion, my chin moves very, very little. Um, <clears throat> imagine the inside of your mouth is like a, a cave, a cavern. Cavernous sound. When I'm normally speaking, it's almost like I've got a, a small rubber ball sitting on my tongue, and my mouth isn't really touching that. And this rounder, larger volume is responsible for part of the way that I sound. So imagine that we're squeezing that, we're flattening it down by restraining this chin motion. Restraining this chin motion. Restraining this chin motion. That is part of changing the way that your sound exits your mouth and enters the world. Now, I mentioned that I was speaking in a British accent for a reason. Now, obviously, a lot of the characters that you'll voice will not be British and will speak with a non-regional diction or some other important accent. But one thing that I find exceptionally helpful when practicing and working on female 
enunciation is to do so in a British accent because it forces you to focus upon the precision and delicacy of your consonants, and also on the musicality that is applied to the vowels between those consonants. There's a sort of back and forth musicality, an up and down. As a guy, I'm talking in dump ba dump ba dump. It's like big radial tires and mud flaps. It's it's lower. It's rolling. It um it doesn't have the same sort of musicality. That's not to say that my voice doesn't go places. I don't alter my pitch and have a certain musical through line to the things that I say. But for female delivery, it's simply different. It's uh, for lack of a better word, it's got more delicacy to it. Um. And practicing this with a British dialect will encourage you to focus upon that component. You'll also notice that you apply less plosive force. So when I say P as a guy, P, P, you can see my mouth goes through quite a, quite a bit of motion during that. Obviously, as a voice actor, you're, you're always trying to keep from popping your P's and you're pulling in on those plosives. But when you're working on a female delivery, you'll find that those plosives have about the same amount of force as any other consonant. P, T, P, T, P, T, P, T. Not much to it, right? All right. Now, this is just our midpoint. This is where we start from. And we're going to be exploring outward from that, depending on the character that we're doing. Their age, their background, their physicality, uh, their personality. All of these elements should come into play. So we don't want to use this midline voice. We don't want to use this midline voice for all of our female characters. Um, again, you can hear that I'm doing a certain amount of delicacy. I'm not doing a British dialect at present, but you can hear a certain amount of delicacy in the approach to the consonants, how they are relatively light. And again, there's this sort of slightly swaying musicality in the vowels between those consonants, stringing them together. Now, let's say we need to alter our age. We're going to age up a character. And what I like to call this is adding a bit of dust to it. And if our point of resonance for our bass line is here at the top, at the roof of our mouth, we're going to drop it back down into our throats just a bit. We're bringing it down so that you can feel it along the underside of your jaw, heading toward more of a Dame Judy Dench. There's a little bit more throatiness, almost a, a smoker's, a smoker's voice as we age the character up. And this should be doable regardless of the dialect. Or perhaps with different dialects. A little bit deep south, a little bit deep southern. You can still age that character up with that same throatiness. And then when you remove that throatiness, we can still have a southern dialect, but it's, it's back to our, our, our midpoint as far as the resonance here, right about at the top of the mouth. Now... We also have to go the other direction, obviously. We need younger characters. Um, and as you do that, one thing that you'll find, we're constraining our lips, obviously. We're not moving our lips much, as we pointed out earlier with A. But also you'll find as you smile, and your posture figures into this as well, you will, I'll find myself becoming more erect as I do this. It'll brighten it up to smile because it's down to the mouth shape. And again, that compression of the interior space of your mouth, that interior cavern. So a little lift can simply be provided just by smiling. But as you go even higher and you're, young, and you're younging them up even more, a slight consistent constraint of the vocal cords up at the top of your, at the top of your vocal cords will provide an additional lift. You don't want to overdo this because, frankly, it'll hurt you. You don't, you don't need to have too much voice strain, especially if this is a character that's, that's voiced for a long period of time. If you need to go even further, there's elements of diction that start to young up a character. When we're here in this bass line, in this bass line, we've got this sort of swaying musicality. And as you young it up, you can bring it together. We're shortening the wavelength, for lack of a better term, for lack of a better term. And as we get higher and we constrain ourselves and we add this shorter musicality, it's almost like a boop. It's, a, it's like a bounce. It's like a, a bubbliness. It's, think of it as youthful exuberance. We're compressing that musicality into a shorter space of time. And you're never going to sound like a six-year-old girl. I am never going to sound like a six-year-old girl. But we're going to evoke them a little bit. We're going to give the listener a guideline on who that character is without ideally going over the top into cartoon. 
We don't want to embarrass ourselves. We don't want to embarrass the author. We certainly don't want to embarrass the characters. So we're just providing a, an entryway so that you can continue to visualize that character. All right. So to kind of recap here, we're taking our, our midline for our baseline voice. We're finding a new center point for it, higher in our mouth, ideally at the top of the mouth, so that the resonance is not falling onto the chin and it's not as heavy here in your throat and in the chest. We're controlling our breath, softer breathing, not as much projection with that breath. We are constraining our lips. We're being more reserved in their usage. They stay tighter, and the space inside of our mouths is collapsing so that it is less cavernous and the resonance is not as overt. We don't open our chin as wide in keeping with that. We practice with a British dialect to really pay attention to the consonants, the vowels between, and the overall musicality of the voice. And you should also be listening to the women in your life. Listen to the, listen to the components of their delivery, their diction, um, these personality traits that find themselves making their way into their common speech, because you want to steal all of those and incorporate them into the character that you are realizing. We talked a little bit about age, about bringing things back down into the throat to age up a character, and again, about pushing them a little bit higher, about using your smile to lift the voice a little bit higher, paying attention to your posture, and again, compressing the musicality into shorter, bubblier phrases for more youthful effect. And uh, one thing I should also mention is that accent is obviously a part of your character work, but your characters themselves could potentially be speaking in different accents. You might have someone who speaks in RP British, but also French. So the accent itself is not the character. It's something that the character does. So we really that's why I'm kind of focusing on the physicality of the baseline for that voice and not upon how you further evoke the character with accent. That's kind of a separate discussion and something that intersects with what you do from the character as a, as a physical manifestation of their attitude and physicality and, and everything else. Um, anyway, I hope this has been useful. It's kind of a starting point to think about some of these things when you're approaching evoking female characters. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Happy reading and have a great one.